What's up everyone? I'm Pamela. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be discussing some Scream prophecies. Some moments throughout the Scream franchise that kind of predicted the future of the franchise. But before we get into it, please don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future posts. And you can also follow me over on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. Let's get into it. So first up for our Scream Prophecies, we have Meg Ryan and her real-life son going on to play Ghostface. In the first Scream movie, there are two mentions of Meg Ryan. Not one, but two. The first one is during the scene when Tatum and Sydney go grocery shopping for party supplies, and Tatum says, just think, if they make a movie about your life, who's going to play you? And Dewey says to Sydney, I see you as a young Meg Ryan myself. I see you as a young Meg Ryan myself. And then in the bedroom scene with Sydney and Billy in the final act, Billy says it's all one big movie, only you can't pick your genre. And Sydney says to Billy, why can't my life be a Meg Ryan movie? Why can't I be a Meg Ryan movie? <laughs> so that's two mentions of Meg Ryan in the first movie. And then of course, her real life son, Jack Quaid, goes on to play Richie Kirsch in Scream 5. I wonder if this was intentional or if, you know, Jack Quaid and the new directors even realized this. Like, does Jack Quaid know that his mom was name dropped twice in the first movie? Did they intentionally seek out Jack Quaid for the part knowing that his mom was named in the first movie? I just think that's so funny. For the second Scream prophecy, we have Tori Spelling. After Dewey says to Sydney, I see you as a young Meg Ryan myself, Sydney says, thanks, but with my luck, they'll probably cast Tori Spelling. Thanks, Dewey, but with my luck, they cast Tori Spelling. And then, of course, Tori Spelling goes on to play Sydney in the Stab movie in Scream 2. This one was definitely intentional, and I love that they did that, and I love that Tori Spelling was willing to play the role even after they kind of, like, made fun of her in the first movie. For Scream Prophecy number three, we have the Silence of the Lambs. So in the bedroom scene with Sydney and Billy in the final act, when Sydney says to Billy, I've been selfish, not getting over my trauma, and I need to move on, Billy says, it's like Jodie Foster in the Silence of the Lambs when she keeps having flashbacks of her dead father. It's like Jodie Foster in the Silence of the Lambs when she keeps having flashbacks of her dead father. And then Billy's own daughter, Sam Carpenter, goes on to have visions of him in Scream 5, her father. I caught this on one of my most recent rewatches. I think that's a great parallel right there. For Scream Prophecy number 4, we have Julia Roberts. In Scream 3, Jennifer Jolie's bodyguard, Stone, says to Dewey that he's a professional bodyguard and his resume lists Julia Roberts. I'm the professional celebrity guard here. Uh, my resume lists Julia Roberts. And then, of course, her niece, Emma Roberts, goes on to play Jill in Scream 4, the very next Scream movie after the one that Julia Roberts was mentioned in. That's another one just like Jack Quaid. Like, I wonder if that was intentional, if anyone has even made that connection, if any of the movie creators, like, put that together and even know about the Julia Roberts reference in Scream 3. For Scream Prophecy number 5, we have Stab 3 production issues. So in Scream 3, we know that the production of Stab 3 gets delayed, shut down, has all these different issues, and you know, the same is happening with Scream 7 right now. You guys are all aware of production issues that Scream 7 is facing with cast members not returning, directors quitting, and we know that these new movies are mirroring the originals. Screams 5 and 6 heavily mirrored Screams 1 and 2, so that's going to be the case with Scream 7 mirroring Scream 3. So this is all just getting <laughs> pretty meta with all these production issues. Scream Prophecy number 6 and my personal favorite prophecy 
is Wayne Bailey. So in the opening scene of Scream 4, Lucy Hale's character, Sherry, says Wayne Bailey's name, who of course is one of the ghost faces in Scream 6, played by Dermot Mulroney. When Trudy doesn't want her to open the door, Sherry says it could be anyone that we know. Lisa, Bailey, Wayne. It could be anyone that we know. Lisa, Bailey, Wayne. I've made a post before a few months ago saying Scream 4 predicted the killer in Scream 6 if you just paid attention. Not only that, but this happens in Stab 6 and Wayne Bailey is in Scream 6. Because, you know, Lucy Hale's character is not actually in Scream 4. Their character's in Stab 6. So that's just another similarity there, which makes this prediction even crazier. Stab 6 name drops Bailey and Wayne, and then Scream 6 has Wayne Bailey as the killer. And bonus prophecy, this isn't the only time that the name Bailey was mentioned. In Scream 2, when Cece Cooper is on the phone with her friend discussing a TV show, Cece mentions the name Bailey. Mm -hmm. Sarah found out that Bailey slept with Gwen. She dumped him. That's not nearly as crazy as Stab 6 mentioning Bailey Wayne, but it is just another little Bailey mention. And finally, the seventh and final Scream prophecy is Kirby Reed and her scars. So in the scene in Scream 4 when Kirby, Jill, and Kate Roberts are in the kitchen and they're kind of spying on Dewey and Sydney talking out in the living room, Kirby says about Sydney, if you think about what she's been through, she must have scars everywhere. And now Kirby is the one covered in scars after the events of Scream 4 and Scream 6. I just think that's interesting and who knows, maybe Kirby Reed will end up being our new main character. Because like I mentioned, all the drama that's going on with casting for Scream 7, who knows if Nev Campbell will even want to come back. So that means we're going to need a new main character. And maybe Kirby can take over. Who knows? That's it for today. Those are seven Scream prophecies. Some predictions that happen throughout the Scream franchise. Please leave a comment down below and let me know what you think of this. Can you think of any other ones? Did I miss any? Please don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future posts. And please also go follow me over on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. And I will see you guys in the next video.